Okay, hi. Uh, in this video, we're going to go over uh, simple searching um, using um, C++ code or C code. Uh, we're going to be just looking at linear and binary search. Uh, so this should be a, a relatively short video. Um, so we're going to look at um, uh, uh, sequential search. Our textbook calls it sequential search. Uh, it's also known as linear search. Um, so if your list is unordered, um, I mean, there are other kinds of searches, um, but almost all of them require some sort of a data structure or ordering or something on the search. So if you just have like an unordered collection of items, um, you have to do linear search or you have to do something to the data to put it into a data structure to do better. So, and, and this is the, this week we're going to be, be, uh, start talking about um, an important topic. We're going to be looking at the performance characteristics of different algorithms. So you're going to learn about the uh, get an, a basic introduction to the topic known as, as um, analysis of algorithms in computer science. So this gives you kind of the tools to be able to compare two algorithms to see which one will do better or worse um, as the number of items that you need the algorithm to handle gets bigger. So, so we'll look at sequential search. Um, and then we're going to look at binary search. So binary search is actually a much better performer, but uh, it only works on if you first sort the list. So you actually have to get your data ordered, like alphabetically or numerically from smallest to largest value, and then you can do a binary search. But as we'll see, it it's, it's, uh, um, performs a lot, lot better than doing a linear search. Once, once you get your data in your data structure. So, um, as usual, I will have uh, this example code in here. This week, or this, well, this video, I should say, uh, I'm pretty much using uh, the, uh, the uh, functions shown in our course textbook almost directly. So, the sequential search function and the uh, binary search function. So, um, let's... Let's look at, although uh, I'm, uh, I did make one little change, so I notice, I mean, I've gotten, we've kind of been uh, just always using uh, lists of integers when we've been doing examples, so I wanted to do something a little bit different. So we'll change our binary and linear search to use uh, uh, lists of strings, or arrays of strings in our case uh, in the C language, okay? So, uh, so we're going to start off with a list of basically 20 random names, and they're not sorted, okay? Um, and let's look at our sequential search um, and go back to the, the function and um, uh, discuss it a bit. So it should be at, at, up at the top of the file. So se sequential search um, takes three parameters, like in our textbook, although uh, in our case it takes a list of strings instead of a, uh, uh, an array of strings instead of an array of integers. So the idea is we want to search this uh, array for a particular item. So the third parameter is the item that we want to search for, right? Um, and the second parameter, so because C uh, arrays don't, don't uh, have their length as part of the, the uh, abstract data type, we have to pass around the length as well for functions that we want to write to use um, uh, basic uh, C arrays, right? Uh, and in this case, the, the function returns the index of the item in our array, okay? So if the item is found, it should return an index between 0 and list length minus 1, right? So again, if our list has 5 items in it, the list length will be 5, so the valid index should be 0 to 4. Or in our example here, our list has 20 items in it, the valid indexes are 0 to 19, okay? So if we find the item, it's going to return a value from 0 to 19. If we don't find the item, the textbook just returns negative 1. I don't like using mag magic numbers, so we should we should um, decide, uh, we should uh, define a global constant. Uh, I'll just call it not found. Uh, again, this is mostly here just to make our code more readable, right? So instead of returning minus one, you have to wonder what that is. Uh, if you're just looking like uh, at this screen of code here, we see that it's returning not found. Yeah, so should make it more readable. All right. So. The thing about linear search, since the or the items are have no order to them, you can't do anything better than to just look at every item until you find what you're searching for. Okay, so so you might as well write a loop where you start at location zero, so at index zero in our array, and we say, you know, is the item at index zero what we're searching for? Uh, nope. Okay, go to the next location. Is the item at index one that we're searching for? Nope. Just keeping doing that. If we, if we find it. 
we're done. Boom. We, we return the uh, the location. That is that that indicates a successful search, um, and it shows uh, what index, what location in the array that the item is. Uh, here, I, I did I did change the code a little bit from the textbook. So um, uh, here, if we get through this loop, that means that we never return. So we never found the item and returned it, and um, we end up just hitting this then and returning our flag, this not found flag. Okay. Um, I'm going to uncomment this uh, just as a little bit of um, kind of a logging message. So we'll be able to see um, every time, every iteration through our while loop here. We'll, we'll print out a little message here of what iteration that we're in, okay? Um, all right, so let's build that and run. And let me go down and let's step through all these here. So kind of as we've done in previous videos, I've got basically kind of tests of, you know, first of all, test of our sequential search function. Let's go ahead and run it. So first of all, we'll search for the item uh, Logan, so the string Logan in here. Um, this should be a successful search because uh, it's right here somewhere around the 10th or 11th item. So I'll step over here, step over. So as soon as we do our search, we should get those log messages. Um, and then, um, you know, it should be a successful search, so it should return the location that it finds. So we actually had to go eight iterations. So this uh, Logan must be at uh, index, uh, what, seven um, here, the, the eighth item in the list here. So if we step over, um, oh, it's uh, at index eight. Okay, so... Um, There we go. Um, all right. So um, keep that in mind. I mean, so to, to begin the discussion about the performance of the linear search, right? So, um, I mean, if we got lucky, if we, if we were searching for Liam, we would just have to go one time through the loop, right? So it would turn right away with just one comparison. So checking if the search item was equal to the item at index zero, Liam, right? So we could get lucky and just be searching for the first item, return immediately, but we could be unlucky, have to search for, want to search for Abigail, it happens to be the last item. So in that case, we'd have to do 20 comparisons, uh, you know, 20 iterations through the loop to find it, right? So uh, you can prove this um, in statistics. If you take the statistics class, you can kind of see that. So uh, given that you were equally likely to find an item, I mean, we would expect on average that we have to go through half of the items before we find it. Sometimes we get lucky, have to do fewer than half. Sometimes we're unlucky, we have to go off to the end or nearly to the end, right? But on average, they'll be in over two. So on the average, it would take us 10 loops um, or 10 key comparisons um, to uh, do this linear search for this this list length of size 20, okay? Uh, and in the, the analysis of algorithms, we usually refer to the, the number of items uh, that we have to be processing with our algorithm just as n. So in this case, our n, our, our size that our algorithm is dealing with is 20. n is 20, okay? Um... Right. Although there's one, I mean, our textbook doesn't mention this. There is one kind of one important caveat for this. So this assumes that all or pretty much all of our searches are um, successful searches. So if you're always searching for an item that's in your list, uh, your performance is going to be in over 20. So on average, you'll have to search about half the list. Okay. Now, uh, so, so it's different if you're, if you're performing um, searches where there's a big chance that uh, the item won't be found, okay? So if it's not found, you have to search through the whole, you have to do 20 iterations through the loop, right? So you have to go through all, all the way through the list to determine, nope, the item isn't there, okay? So, for example, if 90% of your searches um, are unsuccessful, that means that 90% of the time you have to do a full in iterations or a full uh, in key comparisons, okay? So, so that, that changes your average quite a bit. So in that case, we're, for 90% unsuccessful, you're pretty close to, to, you know, needing in iterations on average most of the time, just a little bit less than in, you know, 20 in this case, all right? So, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's the basics, really, of, of performance. That, that's all there is to the performance of the linear search. So let's, uh, let's uh, just look at some other searches. So Logan is, um, um, oh, we, just, we already did Logan. So Liam is the first one, so an example of getting lucky. So this should, should return index zero.
so yeah, search for Liam was at index zero. Uh, Abigail was our last one. So again, this is kind of, um, I'm testing the edge cases here. So these are meant to be unit tests again. So make certain it can find the first item in, in the list and the last item in the list. Um, so, oh, notice for Abigail, again, we had to, we had to go through the loop uh, 19 times. Uh, um, to, to get uh, all the way to before we found Abigail. The why we were actually in the 20th iteration of the loop. Um, I should have put that log message at the top of the loop instead of the bottom. So um, we hit this log message 20 time, 19 times, and then on the 20th time we found it in return. But but we'd actually done 20 key comparisons. Uh, that, that was my mistake. I should have put that at the top here um, to emphasize that um, uh, the exact number of key comparisons that we're making. So. Um, all right, so that was Abigail. Uh, Lucas isn't in our list, so this is an example of an unsuccessful search. So we should have to go through all 20, and then we'll be unsuccessful, and it re return our little flag, the, the negative one, which indicates not found, right? So, so yeah, here we just check and then show it. All right. So that was uh, that, that was the basics of linear search. Um, so now let's look at binary search. So you can do much better, but the the again you you can search much faster. Uh, if I have you know if I have billions of items that I need to search, linear search isn't going to cut it. It's going to take a long time to search through billions and billions of items. You know, uh, you, you can be guaranteed that that Amazon, when you do uh, a search for something, is not search doing a linear search. Um, you'd be sitting there for years before you got your results back. Okay, so um, the, the the simplest thing you can do is order your items from smallest to largest. Or in this case, we're going to order the items alphabetically. Um, the, the, the names here, right? Uh, we'll talk about sorting in the next video, so go to that. So, so just, just know that, that we can call an algorithm to sort our array. So we pass in the array and the size of it, and after returning from it, we, um, the array should be sorted. So let's just show that. So after that, here's our array. Abigail, Amelia, Ava, Benjamin, so A's through Z's, right? So we successfully sorted. So now that we're sorted, we can do our binary search. So uh, let's, let's look at the binary search. Um, so again, this is this is pretty much directly the algorithm from our textbook. Um, if you're in my class, our Malik textbook. So uh, we take the, the same three parameters for this binary search. So we take a string of values, uh, of uh, an array. Uh, sorry, a, a list of strings. Uh, or, or an array of strings that we want to search. Uh, we take the item that we want to search, another string, the item we're looking for, um, and then the size of our list. And again, we're returning the integer. So we return a value from 0 to 19 for this list of 20 values. If we find it successfully, we return not found uh, if we don't find the item. So the strategy for a binary search um, is, uh, so since the items are ordered, we can do this. Uh, this is basically what we do. So, so we uh, we first look at the item in the middle of the list. So initially, we're looking at the whole list. So, so when we first start off, we set first and last to first to be the first index, index zero, and last to be the last index that actually holds an item. So, for our list, it'll be twenty minus one or nineteen. So that means that we're looking at the whole list initially, and we want to find the item in the middle. Okay, so we calculate the the midpoint. Um, so initially, that's going to be 19 plus zero divided by two. We do integer division here. So 19 by, divided by two is what 9.5. Uh, and integer division will just chop off any um, decimal. So we'll get a, a midpoint of nine. Doesn't have to be exactly in the middle. It'll still work. So so the, the idea then is, is we look at the item in the middle. Right now, if the if we if we found it, you know, if we again we could get lucky, so it could be it could happen that we're actually searching for the ninth item, the item at index nine. So we just return. Um, actually, in this case, I set a flag to be true. Uh, this is actually the same thing our textbook does for this algorithm. So we we set a flag to be true, which will call the loop to exit. Um, and then if we find it, we return what the current value of midpoint is, which should be the the, the item. Uh, the, the index where we just found our item, right? But usually we won't find the item. So, so, but since the or since the list is sorted, um, the the item at this at this midpoint 
in comparison to the item we're searching for tells us something, okay? So if we look, and if the, the, mid, the item at the midpoint, so this is going to be a string, if that's greater than the search item, that means that our search item must be alphabetically before that item. So um, you know, if you think of this list as ordered from left to right, that means it must be in a smaller index, okay? So that means we can eliminate all the indexes from the midpoint to the, the, um, to the, to the last. Uh, and we want to concentrate only on the uh, items from zero up to the midpoint. Okay? So the first time through the loop, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're basically eliminating half of the list. Um, and, and then we're going to look again, uh, do the same thing again, but only looking at the items from zero up to that midpoint. So zero to nine in, in the example I've been doing so far. Right, uh, but then, but the other thing could occur as well. So it could be that that the the string at the midpoint was less than the search item. So if it's alphabetically less, you know. So if we were searching for um, um, William, uh, and the item at the midpoint was Liam, that means that must mean that that uh, um, um, that that it was less. So it must be to the right. Okay. So that means that instead we want to search from the midpoint up to the, the end. And so we want to search that half of the list, okay? So, um, so that's the bit, and, and so notice, I mean, this is much more powerful than our, our linear search because every time we eliminate half of our choices. So the first time, uh, just going by whole powers, whole, whole numbers, you know, if we have 20 items in our list, if we don't find it the first time, then, then we reduce our list from 20 to 10. Um, and then the second time through the loop, we reduce from 10 to 5. And then the third time through the loop, we reduce from, from 5 to our worst case down to 3 items. And then from 3, our worst case is down to 2 items, and then from 2 to 1. And then from 1, you know, we're guaranteed we either found it or we know that it's not in our list, okay? So uh, jumping ahead here, I mean, that's, that's uh, um, um, a logarithm. Uh, basically a log base 2, right? So uh, if, I have, if I have a list of 1,024 items, um, it's going to take me log 2 of 1,024, which is 10 uh, iterations, you know, 10 halvings, before I get down to there's only one item left. Because I go from 1,024 to eliminating it down to only 512 items, from 512 to 256, from 256 to 128, and there's only 10 having before you get down to one, right? So the log two, log base two tells you uh, for some size of n, how many times, how many, what was the maximum number of iterations I'll have to go through. I mean, I, I could go through less. I might find it on the very first, right in the middle, or the second or third time um, where, where I, I, I have the list. Uh, but at most, I'll have to go log base two of whatever the size of my list is. All right. So hopefully, if you if you don't understand that, make certain you do. Right. So that's an important point about important thing to understand about understanding how the um, analysis of algorithms works. Understanding the uh, performance and being able to compare the performance of algorithms. So. Um, all right. So yeah, that's, that's the basics of binary search. So let's look at um, let's look at it in action. So oh, again, uh, for binary search, the the version I gave you, we have a little log message. Um, this was the main reason why I, sorry, why I um, uh, put back in that little um, flag so we could have the, uh, the, the log message. Um, oh, no, there is two. Within the loop, there's a log message. So every iteration through the loop, we print out the iteration number, um, and we print out what the current first and midpoint are, first and last and the midpoint are. Um, and then at the end, we, we print out some, in, from, some information. Um, all right. So let's just look at this uh, in action here. So first, let's search for Logan. Um, so Logan is, is uh, oh, we need to look at our sorted list here. So Logan comes, again, approximately in the middle, a little bit past the, the midpoint. So, I mean, eyeballing that, that looks like um, index 11 or 12 or something like that. So we'll step over, step over. So, um, so I just told you that uh, we should only need uh, what a maximum of five iterations for twenty items. Log two of twenty is 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 four point something, right? You have to kind of round up to to get what the maximum is. 
<coughs> because 2 to the 4 is 16 and 2 to the 5 is 32. So um, it could take a little bit more than than four iterations. It did, did take us four iterations. We found it in index 12 here, right? Um, I should have searched for the item exactly in the middle to show they could take one iteration or two iterations. Uh, but uh, anyway, I'm, I'm sure you believe me. William was the last item. So here's, here's the worst case. Uh, actually, the worst case is, is again, an unsuccessful search. Um, uh, but yeah, if you search for an item at the beginning or the end, that, that should also take you to the maximum number of iterations um, um, to determine that the item is in there. So um, let's step over that. There's our search. So uh, yeah, so we see that to get William at index 19, it takes us five times through the loop. So again, here, here you know, the, 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 the little log messages are to try to help you understand what's happening. So initially, first and last are 19. We set the midpoint at nine. So remember, we're looking for the, the item at index 19. So since we didn't find it, then the second, every time we're gonna set mid to be the, uh, the, uh, the, the midpoint. We're gonna set first to be the midpoint. So the next time, the midpoint plus one. So the next time we've, uh, we've eliminated the items from index 0 to 9 and we're searching from 10 to 19. We, didn't, we, uh, we don't find it at 14 and it's still greater than 14, so now we're going to search from 15 to 19. Um, and, and the item in the middle of that is 17. And, and it's not at 17 and we determine it's greater than 17, so we search from 18 to 19. And then finally, the, your last time through the loop, the first and last will be equal. And that, that's the stopping condition to tell um, that you've exhaustively, ser you've exhaustively searched the list and know that either the item is, is in it or uh, the item, the search is unsuccessful. So um, when first is equal to last, you have to do one final search, and at that point, first is going to be less than last. And then when they cross each other, you know that you've searched everything in this typical iterative way of, of, of defining the, uh, the, the binary search here. All right. So that was searching for the last item. Um, so here's, again, a uh, similar thing, but we'll search for the first item, the item at the very beginning of the list. So again, we'll need... Um, um, we only need four iterations there before we, we determine that it wasn't in there. So, um, And then another more. Oh, this is an unsuccessful search. So again, an unsuccessful search should always take uh, five iterations to eliminate, you know, to, to be certain that it's not in there when we have 20 items in our uh, list that we're searching for. So. Okay, so that's, um, that, that's the basics of the, the linear and binary search. So, um, um, so as I said, you know, uh, th this, this tells us that, that um, the number of, of, of times through the loop, and since we're only doing one comparison each time for the, the, sequ the sequential search, we're going to have to do n divided by two comparisons on average. Uh, that, that's our performance uh, for the sequential search. But the... Um, the binary search, um, you know, at worst we're going to have to do log two uh, time, uh, of n. Um, so if n is the number, the size of our list, we'll at most have to do log two comparisons. This is kind of an upper bound. But each time we're doing two um, comparisons. Um, the the reason for that is that um, uh, again, if you look closely at the um, um, linear search, we um, we, we check if it's equal, um, and then we check if it's greater than. So those are the two comparisons. So if you look at the textbook, um, it says that, it, that, that the, the, the um, performance is two times the log of n, which, which is true, right? So, so that's, that's actually the number of key comparisons. We only have to do one comparison every time that we iterate on the sequential search, but two for these, okay? So one final thing then, um, this, is, this is kind of a preview for... Uh, next week when we get deeper into talking about analysis of algorithms. So let, let's look at the performance, comparing the performance of n over 2, which is the sequential search, to uh, 2 times log 2 of n. Right? So uh, on the x-axis um, is n, the number of items in the array that we want to search. Um, this, is, this is a log-log scale, so um, well, I'll get to that in a second here, but but yeah. So as so here, this is what, if we have ten items in the list, 
This is if we have 100 items in, in the list we want to search, 1,000 items, 10,000 items, and 100,000 items. So you should see that, that even with 100,000 items, it only takes the binary search a little over 10. Uh, so that's about, what, 50, 50 comparisons um, to be guaranteed, 50 times iterate, well, 25 iterations through the loop, and two times that to, to guarantee, you know, to find the item, right? But uh, for the linear search, it's going to take half of ten of of um, of a hundred of ten thousand of a hundred thousand um, ten to five hundred thousand. So so that's fifty thousand. So so this grows much quicker th than that. So there's no comparison. I mean, uh, uh, binary search is going to be almost immediate. So even if we have a billion, ten to the nine, uh, it, it's still only going to take less than around a hundred. Um, comparisons to, to search a billion, but it's going to take half a billion, you know, so half a billion searches might take you hours, you know, depending on how fast your computer is, but, but you know, we're still only taking about 100 comparisons to do the binary search. So that, that's why being able to compare the performance um, uh, a characteristic is important, you know, so it's impossible to search linearly through a billion items. Um, you know, you'll be waiting for a long time, even on, on a really fast computer. But binary search is going to return almost immediately, right? Um, and one final quick thing: so the uh, the the performance of the the bubble sort or all of our sorting algorithms that we look at is about n squared. So n squared, um, you know, if you compare a logarithmic uh, performance to uh, n, uh, which is a linear performance. Uh, and then if you pro compare linear performance to uh, n squared performance, uh, that that's uh, even another jump. And again, the, the log scale here doesn't do it justice, right? So uh, again, for um, 100,000 items, you know, the, the n over two is going to take about 50,000 comparisons. So so 100,000 divided by two. But an n squared algorithm is going to be 10 to the 10. That's um, 10 to the nine is billion. So that's 10 billion. Right, so you know that is is going to take you know even for just a hundred thousand items that's going to take hours for for an n squared algorithm. Um, all right, so I think we covered everything. That that's the basics. Like I said, this this is um, um, just a little bit of a setup for talking about the analysis of algorithms. Um, but here and here we only looked at search. So in the next video we'll look at sorting algorithms. We'll look at a couple of different sorting algorithms. Um, but uh, that's it for this video, um, um, so I'll leave it there, and I will see you in the next one.